Hey, this is Captain. I've been playing Fallout 4 as a looter shooter for two years, and this is going to be my new mod. This is obviously a Creation Club patch, like I've done in the past with the Ghost Rifle, and it's going to be the improved anti-material rifle. So, long story short, I was a little bit disappointed what the, what this thing could do in its standard form once you get it out of the bat from the Creation Club download. So, I've taken it upon myself to make a few buffs, really make this thing viable, and possibly a little bit overpowered for your late game um, purposes. So right off the bat, this thing's got the standard receiver and we're doing 526 damage. Keep in mind that we do have um, Rifleman rank five, so that's all boosted. So yeah, we're doing a lot more damage out of this. It's definitely what you want to see out of a weapon that fires 50 caliber bullets. I've increased the base damage from a measly 50 to 175, which is more than tripling the thing, but I came to that conclusion that it needed to be more than tripled for it to be viable, at least on very hard. If you play on lesser difficulties, you might find this thing to be a little bit overpowered. If so, I might come along and uh, nerf it just a little bit. We'll get into the attachments right now. Now, for the receivers, I made a simple change here. I took out that useless 38 caliber receiver and replaced it with an advanced one. That'll give you the same damage bonus that you get out of the assault rifle. I think it's plus 75%, which brings our damage to 90, oh, 923. Sorry. Now, for the barrels, I did nothing. Um, you can still grab the encased barrels if you feel like this thing is a little bit too overpowered. That'll actually take out quite a little bit of damage now that we're... Uh, scaling the damage that high. We'll go for a long barrel on this and we'll go for a marksman's light stock there. That seems to be the most be the best little thing you can put on that. And for the magazines, there's no point on chucking on anything else in the large mag. We'll give you a little bit more reload time, but we'll get to that a little bit later. I have changed nothing with the side, so we'll just chuck on a short scope there. And no, you know what? Let's chuck on a short recon scope because those sights are objectively better because you don't get as bad tunnel vision. Now, for the muzzles, obviously a suppressor is what we're going to do again. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting because I have added three, count them, three attachment points to this. So just like New Vegas, you can sort of change the um, ammo or the ammunition this thing uses. It'll all be using the same 50s, but yeah, you'll have pretty much like soft legendary effects on your bullets. So you've got the normal bullets, which we've got in now. Match bullets increase your damage a little bit. Just a little bit, kind of like the match rounds in New Vegas. Incendiary, it's um, setting your targets on fire for 90 points of damage. Explosive, um, that'll have a frag grenade explosion on your projectiles instead of the little tiny piss poor regular explosion. It needs to be powerful for a 50 cal. And the AP, which will um, actually get rid of 50% uh, of your armor, so you'll be able to punch through those gunners at Gunners Plaza and all of their high value combat armor. Moving on from that, we've got the upgrades, which gives you a choice of five different upgrades for you to put on your weapon, and they all take up the same slot, so choose wisely. So first of all, you've got the Ergo Grip and Stock, and basically that gives you a little bit better to your aim in scope, so it'll be less scope sway, and it'll give you plus 25 chance to crit, kind of like the overdrive effect, so it's like a marksman stock and an overdrive effect all in one. Carbon fiber parts, that one was from New Vegas. If you want to make this thing weigh a little bit less in your inventory, I might actually buff that soon, but yeah, um, yeah, you can go ahead and have that as a little bit of a perk. IR sights will pretty much give you a um, targeting visor that you get on your power armor when you aim down sights. Improved mag well will increase your reload speed, and stopping power will give you the chance to knock down your enemies, and it will stack with Sniper 2. So that's like another 15% to knock down, and you don't have to be aiming down sights to activate that. So they're all there if you feel like giving this thing a little bit more of a buff. We'll go ahead and chuck on the Ergo Grip and Stock. Now the materials. This is one of the um, retextures you can get of these weapons. I've decided to um, not have any of those unique things be locked to the textures. And you can just change this however you want it. So the Death Claw makes it red. The Power Armor makes it nice and green. And the regular skin is how we have it right now. We'll leave that right now. And we'll go ahead and chuck those skins on the other weapons that I have. Custom Bolt, that's the standard one. You can increase your fire rate a little bit. And there we go, a legendary effect is there if you need it. We've got the standard ammunition, so that is going to override whatever's there. But don't worry, that should work just fine. So with our recon anti-material rifle here, we'll just bring it out for a second. Now in terms of the rate of fire of this thing, it was pretty bad. So looking back at New Vegas, I copied some of the numbers down. Big thanks to um, Kung Fu Master of the Junk Master mod to um, actually give me some of these ideas. So uh, yeah, go download Junk Master. We'll get to firing this thing. As you can tell there, you get a much better rate of fire out of it. That's basically 
Um, actually, with the standard one, it would be on par to what it was like in the uh, Fallout New Vegas game. But as you can tell there, yeah, you get a lot better rate of fire out of it. More DPS. Now, you might notice there's a couple of other things here. That is because one of these is semi-auto, and the other one is auto for shits and giggles. Okay, so this is the semi-auto one. It doesn't have a crazy rate of fire, but you don't have to sit through the... Um, animation of cranking the bolt every time unless you reload which is kind of interesting but yeah that could be a thing that you might you know lack about this weapon because real life anti-material rifles they're all bloody semi-auto look at the barrett m82 i think all right so and the automatic one it's a little bit of a crazy mess but i figured why the hell not you know so yeah, you can use that if you feel like it, but I think that it'd probably be a little bit overpowered. But you know what? You spend four dollars on this Creation Club thing, or maybe you pirate it. But um, yeah, that's bad. But yeah, you can go ahead and uh, have a little bit more fun with your anti-material rifles now that they've got a little bit more customization options to them, as well as a couple of firing modes. All of these standalone weapons are created at the chemistry station under anti-material rifle. They all cost uh, four caps each, just because the memes of this thing, you know, it's like the real life equivalent of four dollars you'd have to pay for this weapon. Okay, we'll get into shooting people now. Okay, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza. That means there's going to be a lot of gunners to shoot. We'll just go ahead and light them up with our recon scope there, just so we can get an idea of how many gunners there are. So we'll get stuck into these guys pretty soon. We'll pick a stationary target to shoot first, because that'll be the easiest to hit. There we go. Uh, two and a half K damage there. Pretty decent for an anti-material rifle. Although we can't actually kill these guys in one shot 100% of the time. So... By that, I'm pretty sure, I don't think you could call this thing overpowered by that logic there. Also, they're shooting at what I believe is a blood bug right now, and I can't believe I missed that shot twice. So, all in all of that nonsense there, I'll just back off behind this dead car, and wait till that... Okay, that, that blood bug is seriously causing a lot of problems for these gunners there. I can't even get sneak attack crits on them, because they're actually aggroed. And also, some of them don't have weapons, which is kind of bizarre but now that thing's dead we can get the sneak attack criticals rolling again and yeah you can tell there's quite a lot of enemies around here and they're pushing me back quite a bit but luckily for me sneak is quite overpowered and I'm able to knock out these guys in one shot at this range here the rate of fire definitely helps on this thing but as you can tell the reload is still very slow if you want to make that better then putting the improved mag well in will definitely serve you well there so so far so good we'll switch over to our semi-auto one now with our glow sights there so it should be nice and fun to use and a little bit harder to hit the targets at range without the use of a scope, but we'll manage somehow. Also, we can't light up targets anymore since we don't have the ability to use that recon scope effect. But as you can tell, the uh, semi-auto one makes this thing more of a DMR type weapon. That's why I chose the iron sights for it instead. I feel like it suits a little bit more. But obviously, scopes are compatible with this thing if you want it. If you dread using this thing as a bolt-action weapon, then yeah, you can go ahead and make this thing scoped in semi-auto just like that. Looks like these guys aren't taking the sneak attack crits anymore. We'll whip out the crazy fun uh, automatic one. This one's got a, uh, yes, a reflex sight on it just because it'll help us out with that a little bit. And we've got the incendiary effect going there. And as you can tell, we get a little bit of damage on them there. That's a grenade. We don't have to worry about that. Oh, it's a cryo grenade too. The gunners have been getting themselves some of the advanced grenades. Now that we are in danger, no point in sneaking anymore. We'll take it right to them. We've got a powerful weapon. As you can tell here, whilst it does do quite a lot of damage, it is held back quite a bit by its um, magazine size, which is only 10. So that one's already dead. No need to shoot him. So um, using this thing wisely... Or well, using this uh, thing's ammo sparingly is probably a good thing because, yeah. But also on survival mode, it would take a lot of actual bullets to make this thing uh, all that, you know, useful. And the bullets are quite heavy there, so you might not get too much use out of the 50 cal, uh, the anti-material rifle of the automatic variety on survival. But it, then again, you'll need less bullets to take out the guys since you've got that two times damage multiplier. So we'll go Rambo style to kill the rest of these guys. And you know what? Let's go ahead and use this thing in VATS because since it is automatic, as you can tell there, 
it shoots in bursts in vats, which is incredibly powerful. If I had a longer barrel on it, we'd be able to get a little bit better damage or accuracy on these gunners here, but we should be doing fine. With the short barrel and the reflex sight, you can tell that we've got a lot of shots in vats with this, and that is one of the things I didn't change. The AP usage of this thing is still the same as it was. Um, in New Vegas, the actual AP usage of this thing is 55, and that's probably a little bit excessive, but, you know, balance. But in terms of um, using this thing as a VATS weapon only, you can still get away with that with the AP as low, or the AP usage as low as it is. We'll bust in here and clear out the room with our Auto 1. That's Go into sneak mode. Yes, we can get away with that. And not with my aim. Now, the recoil on this is a little bit high simply because you, um... You're firing so much with the a hunting rifle um, aim model, which controls the recoil. So yeah, there's a lot of recoil under this. You can actually tame that a little bit if you don't put on the custom bolt. The custom bolt actually does increase the um, rate of fire of the uh, semi-auto ones and the auto ones too, which is pretty neat there. So that attachment is universally kind of um, useful on all of my versions of the hunting rifle, but. There you go, that was Immersive Gunners Plaza cleared there. We didn't even lose half a health bar this time, which, um, yeah, will probably go to show you that, yeah, this thing's got a pretty good buff, and I'm about happy where the damage is. Um, if you go ahead and download this, be sure to leave me a comment seeing how, or just, uh, yeah, leave me a comment and tell me how you think this weapon should be changed. If it should be changed, I'll take any suggestions into account. Maybe think of new attachments I could make for this. Yeah, because uh, there's a little bit more I want to do with this, but for now, I'm happy with this one being the first release there as we decimate that car in one shot. Alright, this is an explosive one. We'll go and kill Swan, and I think we'll call it a video there. When it came to making the explosive bullets on this weapon, I knew that the regular explosive effect explosions wouldn't really give this thing or do justice to the explosive 50 cal bullets. So, yes, I, as I said before, I went with the frag grenade explosion, so we'll go ahead and hey, take a look at that in bats there. Now, without the sneak attack criticals helping us out there, we're still doing 2,000 damage, and we get a sweet knockdown there because we can. Very rapid fire shots in bats there. I'm not sure if... Um, Tweaking the weapon firing speed stats will actually change that too much. But yes, we've, I think we've also got the stopping power um, uh, upgrade on this too. So we get 30% chance to knock this guy down in scope division rather than the 15% chance. Which, uh, as you can tell there, yeah, you're able to decimate pretty much everything the game can throw at you. At this point, yeah, this weapon is completely overpowered. But you know what? Again... You paid four dollars for this thing why not have a little bit of fun with it and of course it's completely optional unless you're weak willed and have to always go for the hmm i think we killed him so hard that he was buried through the sky or buried through the ground and then he teleported back through the sky so yeah if that doesn't tell you anything about this weapon's power i don't i don't <laughs> know what will now back to talking about people who always take the overpowered things because they can't if you're weak-willed enough to resist using the explosive one all the time, I tip my hat to you because, man, I make it great, don't I? <laughs> nah, just kidding, but yeah. Um, if you do feel like this is overpowered, let me know. I might turn it down a little bit. 150 damage might be a little bit over the top. Of course, that obviously gets um, elevated by the Demolition Expert perk too. So, yeah, it's a little bit of perk um, sort of investment to get that going to full, you know, full power. But yeah, it's a little... yeah. I think I've run out of commentary for this one because, yeah, this is nice and overpowered now. What it should be, to be honest. But, yeah, do leave your thoughts in the comments if you end up downloading this thing. This thing will be made available for all platforms, so PS4 players, don't worry. It's coming out for you guys as well. That's why I like doing Creation Club patches, because everyone can benefit from it. Thank you for watching, guys.